Hello everybody, welcome back to Firefield Junction and welcome to another review. And as we can see, uh, something rather special for you today. Today we have one of the, well, fairly new, <laughs> LNER Class 800s from Hornby. Uh, now this one isn't mine, this has been very kindly loaned to me by a friend, um, which is very, very thoughtful and very, very thankful for it. Um, amazing friend, love him to bits, really, really good. <laughs> very, very thankful uh, for him loaning this to me to have a look at. Now the Hornby um, LNR Class 800, um, obviously they haven't been out incredibly long, um, I think they have released a couple of them now, obviously there's this one and then there's one of the plain liveried ones as well. Um, this particular one, um, obviously 800, 800, 004, 800, 004, 800 104, um, in real life this um, particular set in real life is a 9 car version um, and it is a bit of a shame that Hornby aren't doing um, the extra coach pack for this particular one. So that would be really, really, a really, really good thing to do. Um, whilst they are doing an extra coach pack um, for the LNR um, 800, it's not for this particular one, it's uh, for the other 9-car version that they're doing. Um, I can't remember the, num the number of it, but they are doing a 9-car version um, of the LNR 800. Um, obviously, they're doing the GWR 9-car version as well, um, but the 9-car version they're doing, um, they are obviously going to be doing an extra coach pack for that. But unfortunately, they're not doing an extra coach pack for this one, which is a bit of a shame, I think, because it would be really, really nice to have the full nine car set of, of this model. Now, I know you probably should, you could get, um, or at least you, I don't see why not, you can't, I don't see why you couldn't get um, the extra coach pack that they're doing for the other LNER 800 and then just renumbering it uh, to then be to then be suitable to go with this one. You could do that. Um, I'm not sure if it'd be possible. There could be some differences between the coach pack on that one, like tooling differences between that, it might not look accurate with, with this one. I uh, don't know, something like that. Um, so it is a bit of a shame that um, it's not gonna be that easy to, get, to do the nine car version of this set, but at least it's here, at least we ha at least they have done this particular one, because it is r rather unique with the branding on the side. It is very, very nice. And I have seen the real thing as well, and it does look good. <laughs> so there's that as well. Um, so the, the Class 800 from Hornby, it's, I think it's had a bit of a troubled past um, when they first released these, um, the GWR versions, there was a bit of an um, issue with those. Um, I know these LNER versions and I think the uh, Tesla, Tesla delivery versions as well, I think light bleed issues are also a common thing with these. Um, so we'll have to see if that, we will check if that's the case on this one as well. Um, I guarantee it probably is, but we'll, obviously we'll check that later to see if how bad any light bleed is. If it is present anyway um but overall uh, not too bad um the hornby class 800 it's a very nice model um it's very overpriced these days but if you can get one for a good price uh, like this one was this was a bargain price um because a uh, kerno were doing these are an, an absolutely bargain reduced price um i don't know if they still are um, but they did do these for an absolute bargain price um, which is really really good very well worth it don't pay Hornby's RRP that they're charging for the new 800s now because that's just ridiculous. But if you can get these for a good price, um, any 800, if you can get it for a good price, then do because they are fantastic models. They really, really are. I really can't fault them. And the, the box, um, it's obviously it's a very, very big box. Um, you can see there it's DCC ready. Um, the low, this model has already been ran in and chipped, uh, by the way, so we won't have to worry about running it in or chipping it. Um, and we will be able to sit right on DCC straight away. Um, it is Hornby decoders that have been fitted to both ends. Um, so performance might not be 100%, but um, any any sort of, I'd say, issues with the performance, <laughs> we can just blame on the decoder because we know the Hornby decoders, they're not very good. Um, they're okay, they're not absolutely terrible, but the performance from them is definitely not as good as other decoders out there. But it's okay, if you like them, then that's no, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you have a look at the end of the box, um, not that end. <laughs> nope, not that end either. That's because the information is actually on the side. So we can see there, so the model code is R3827. It's an LNER Azuma Class 800, the Celebrating Scotland. A five car train pack, obviously the real thing though is nine car. But obviously this particular pack is five car. Um, there's not much else in the box really. I don't think there's really anything on the back. Uh, there, is a little, there is a little bit on the back, so we've got some information there about the 800s, about the um, Azuma ones as well. 
and also about this particular one as well there. So if you want to read that, then feel free to. I've got another nice image as well on the back of the box. If we just flip it, flip, flip it back over. There we go. Let's open her up. We'll get her out. We won't waste, won't waste any time. We'll have a look at her. So if we just lift up the flap, move that to one side. If we pull out both trays at the same time. Ooh, there we go. Slightly tight. Ooh. It's coming this way. There we go. Um, there are this model obviously does come with instructions, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, the owner of the model has forgot to put the instructions back in the box. But that's fine. Um, we are used to seeing the instructions from Hormy models. Um, we know what they're like. They just tell you the typical stuff, um, typical maintenance, uh, fitting where to fit the chip. I will talk about things such as fitting the chip to these um, later on. But it's the usual stuff, really. It's what we're used to. Um, if, but if you do want to see um, the instruction manuals uh, for these, then I recommend either going to maybe going to Hormy's website um, or maybe check out another review um, of, of uh, an 800. And you should be able to see the instruction manual, hopefully, in one of them. But anyway, if we just grab the motor unit. Ooh, there we are. Okay, there we go. We'll put the leave the flap on top for now. We'll put everything else to one side. And then we can focus on the motor unit for now. So here we are. And wow, look at this. This is amazing. I think this is one of the things you can guarantee with Hornby models is that the livery application is top notch. It really is. It's incredibly well applied. It looks amazing. All of the branding there down the side. It's so well done. This is one thing you can guarantee. Whilst the general quality, like maybe the build quality of Hormi models may not be the best, the delivery application, 99% of the time, is something you can guarantee on. It's absolutely fantastic. We've got the uh, special coupling there to ensure that you can only couple um, the coaches of various Class 800s together, and nothing else, because um, obviously most other stock isn't going to be compatible with these, so you don't really want it to have the chance of coupling to other, other stock. The underframe detail is very, very nice. Whilst it is fairly basic, there's still plenty of colour to it. It doesn't look too bad. Obviously, the motor is just around there. It's two flywheels on the motor as well. It's a nice big five-pole motor. It's a really good quality one. And that obviously drives all of the wheels. All of the wheels have pickups on them as well. As we can see, we can see the pickups there. And if we go to the other bogey, we can see the pickups there as well. You can see the decoder in there as well. Obviously, if you were buying this model, there wouldn't be a decoder in there. Um, fitting the decoder to these is quite easy. All you do is the same on the, on the dummy unit. You take out those three screws, the bottom lifts off. You can then take out the blanking plate, pop your chip in, put the bottom back on, put the screws back in, and that's it. That's all you need to do. Um, you do need to be careful um, so that it can be quite a tight fit around where this center screw goes because there is some capacitors around here as well. So you've got to ensure that you tuck the wires properly out of the way so they're not going to get damaged by the screw. They're not going to get crushed by anything. It is, it is a little bit of a tight fit, but it does work. It, there is just enough room in there for the decoder. You have got the working lights as well. Obviously, you've got the nice bright um, headlights there and on the top when it comes towards you and when it's going away from you. You've got some nice tail lights as well, and they do a very good job of it. Uh, the lights on these are very, very good. I can't fault them. Uh, the door does not open. None of the doors open, which is a bit of a shame, especially considering how much these cost. It probably would be nice if maybe that door did open, but it still looks very good. It's still very nicely detailed. It's very nicely molded. You've also got the number there as well, 800-104. Uh, the roof is okay. It's not the best. I'd say it's probably not the best roof in the world. Obviously, towards the back, you have got the um, all of the electrical equipment. However, all of it is just is just it is all just plastic. Um, there's no metal on it at all, which again, for the price, it's a little bit of a shame. But it does look pretty good. It's not all one color as well. It's all um, done with a few different colors, which it, colors which is nice. Uh, the pantographs on these, um, you can have them up if you want to, but they do feel very very cheap. They they really don't feel quality. Which again, on a model like this. You don't really want that. On a model like this, you want a decent quality pantograph like that. So if it were better if it was metal, or if, or maybe at, at the very least, it would be better if it was a more solid plastic. But I think metal is really what you want with this. Now, I know you probably could do fit a metal pantograph and maybe, maybe try and make it so that it's working as well. 
Maybe that, that's something Hornby could have done. But I suppose one of the things you do have to consider these days, especially with DCC, DCC doesn't work incredibly well with the overhead systems. <laughs> From what I've heard anyway, it, it apparently doesn't, it doesn't work very well. So whilst it would be nice, I suppose, to have the option for a working pantograph there, I suppose there are a way you could wire the model up in a certain way so that when the pantograph's up, and um, you can then, if you wanted to, run it on DC <laughs> in a way. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I suppose it would <laughs> it would be nice to have a working pantograph. So maybe you could run it on analog, let's say, with the working pantograph and the working overhead system. But then maybe, maybe by the flick of a switch, it then switches to DCC, so you can then run it from powered from the track, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> But you know what I mean. It would. It, I think if, it just would be nice on a model this expensive to have a working pantograph or at least have a metal one, because the plastic ones, they don't really quite cut it to be honest. They do look very cheap and they do feel it as well. They are incredibly flimsy. They really are. I'd say that's probably the worst thing about these to be honest is the flimsy pantographs in terms of the detail. Anyway, it definitely could be better. But I'd say apart from that, it's not overly bad. So you've got some very nice cab detail as well. Um, you can't see it very well, you have to get the light in at the right angle. If I try and turn it around the other way, maybe. Um, there you go, that's a little bit, little bit better. You have got some decent cab detail in there, which is good. Especially on the dashboard as well. All of the gauges there are detailed, which isn't too bad. Um, obviously behind the nose, the nose does come off. Then you've also got the dummy coupler behind there as well. Um, if you wanted to, you can fit a coupler in there if you wanted to, to make a 10 car set or whatever. Um, I've done it, so you can buy... Um, some brand new magnetic couplers that have been developed and to make a 10 car set and they do work very well and um, they're not the best quality but they do work very well um, so apart from that that's, <laughs> I think that's mostly it to be honest overall it's not too bad the motor unit it looks very very good so if you put that to one side we'll have a quick look at the dummy unit obviously it's not incredibly different apart from the livery and the weight I suppose so here we are, we've got the dummy units here, obviously much, much lighter because there's no motor inside. Again, the detail is just as good. Obviously, you haven't got the uh, Sc Celebration Scotland uh, branding on here, but the livery is still very nicely applied. Again, you've got the coupling there as well. The detail, again, very, very good. Again, unfortunately, you've got the plastic pantograph again, but again, it all looks pretty good. It could be worse. Um, pickup situation, though, on these units isn't great because it's just this bogey here that picks up electricity um, for the lights on this unit. If I remember correctly on this one, <laughs> one of the pickups is damaged, I think. I think one of them was bent, but I can't remember which one it was. It might be that one there on that wheel. I know one of them was damaged and it needed realigning, but I can't remember which one it was. Um, I think it might be this one on here, because I can't actually see the one on this wheel anymore. Um, so that might need realigning. Um, yeah, here's that one. I can see it's bent above the top of the wheel. There you go. You can probably just see it in there. So we have got a damaged pickup, which is unfortunate. Again, on a model this expensive, can't be having that. So that's not acceptable, Hornby. Stuff, something like this. No, nope, don't want it. Sort it out. You can't have these issues on a model this expensive. It's not acceptable. <laughs> I'm going to call you out every time you do something like this. So I'll be there. I will. I mean, you can see obviously see the other uh, decoder in there as well because obviously you need the decoder in there on DCC to control the lights. Um, I will have to reprogram this unit actually because this is a slight problem um, with the Hormi 800s when you uh, uh, convert them to DCC is that when you do do it um, you then have to change a CV29 on one of the units and um, the dummy unit would be the best one to do because otherwise you will have the same lights um, on both units um, depending which direction you're going in, so you'll always so you'll either have to headlights on both units or tail lights on both units. But if you can, check, um, edit CV29, and that will fix the issue for you. Um, obviously, it's not really a very good uh, thing issue to have. Um, I think it's just the way Hornby wired up the models inside. I think they wired both of them up to get um, the same way around instead of wiring one of them the opposite way to the to the other one. I think. Um, so it's a bit of a shame. Um, I don't know why Hornby haven't fixed it yet, because they need to. Um, it might be fixed on the new releases that, that um, come out next year, um, but we'll have to see about that when they actually come out. But yeah, overall, really, really good. Again, quality, the detail, just as good on the motor units, apart from that bent pickup, of course. Overall, it's not too bad. 
So with those two units out of the way, we'll have a quick oh, we'll have a quick look at one of the coaches, and then we can put it on the track. So if we just there we go, lift up the flap. I'll grab the top coach. Oh, a bit of a tight fit. So here we are. So we've got one of the centre coaches. So this is a uh, coach C. And again, just like the dome unit, weight is about the same. Obviously, there are pickups on this unit um, for the interior lighting. Um, you can't control the interior lighting, unfortunately, um, which is a bit of a shame, but at least it's there. It is a nice touch. Let's say for a model of this price, it's something you, sh you should be getting. And the detail, again, just as good. The livery application, really, really good. No blemishes, as you'd expect. Various warning signs all over the place as well. <laughs> I just can't fault it to be honest. It's really, really good. Really can't fault it. So let's put the model on the track and see how she runs. Okay, so here we are. So we're now ready to put the model on, onto the track so, and we can see how she runs. Now I'm gonna put the dummy unit on first and we'll put the motor unit uh, on last. So there we go, nice and easy. Uh, the interior lights have come on. You might not be able to see them on camera. I'm not too sure, um, but they are on. Um, I've also uh, reprogrammed this unit so that now um, I basically reversed the configuration um, so that now it's displaying the um, opposite light to the uh, motor units like it should be. Um, by default, these units will display this exact same light on DCC and once you chip it. So, it gets, so again, you do have to change the config um, on one of the units. Again, I recommend doing the dummy. But once that's done, you will then have the correct lights uh, displayed on this unit. And then obviously the same on the motor unit. And I've also I've also repaired um, the damage pickup as well. And I've bent that back into place as best I can. Um, but it should be it should hopefully um, make the lights work better. Now they're definitely working better than they were to start with. Before they were just flickering like crazy as the test the dome units ran along. But they do seem to be a lot more stable now. So hopefully, fingers crossed, everything should be fine. If need be, the Takoda can always be upgraded to one with a stay alive. <laughs> Hopefully we won't need to go that. Hopefully um, we won't need to go that far, but everything, fingers crossed, should be fine now. Although let's be honest, Hornby should have fitted this with all-wheel pickup. Other manufacturers, I've seen other other manufacturers do it on all the mod, on older models. For example, Batman's uh, Voyagers. They're much older. Yes, the dumb units on those with the lights, both units have all-wheel pickup. So Batman did it on that. Hornby should have done it on this. No excuse for it really. <laughs> But anyway, we'll stop complaining for the moment. So we'll push that unit down the track a bit. So the next unit we want is Coach C, which is this one. So we'll stick that on. There we go. And we can then couple those up. There we are. Then the next one we, would, we need is Coach H, which is this one. So the, the coach order on these is a little bit random, but I'm sure there's a very good reason for it. I suppose when you uh, if, when you um, upgrade this to a nine car, I suppose it should then make more sense because obviously in real life this unit, this particular unit, is a nine car. It's a nine car set. It's not a five car, so it's a little bit awkward as a five car. But it should still look very very good. And there we go. Then the most units. Last but not least. Oh, come on. There we are, just getting the couplings lined up. And there we are. And she does look the part. She does look amazing. So if we just stick the lights on, we can see the headlights there. And we have got the tail lights at the other end. If we change direction, you can see they've got the tail lights. And yeah, we have got the headlights in the other direction. So if we just give her a bit of a wiggle. So yeah, she is a little bit jerky, but again, that is obviously partially the Dakota's fault. Well, it is the Dakota's fault. Obviously, with the best Dakota, or even on analog, she will be much smoother, and she should be much quieter as well, because again, with Hornby Dakotas, uh, it does make the motor sound quite loud. There we are. Now, before we get her running, one thing we will test is see how much light bleeds there is on the model. Now it is pitch black outside, so we'll be able to see this very, very clearly. So I'll quickly go and switch the lights off and we'll see if there's any light bleed.
Well, I'll tell you what, that's not what I was expecting. There is almost zero light bleed on that. There is a tiny bit uh, from the interior lighting uh, down the sides, but it's very, very minor. Well, I'm saying that now, now that I can actually see it a bit better, there is actually quite a lot around the cab. The cab, the top of the headlights here, um, which I believe is also the cab lights, there is quite a bit of light bleed there, actually, more than I thought. But to be honest, it's not as worse as I was expecting it to be. Now, obviously, in pitch black, it is going to be more obvious. That's, well, it's, <laughs> it's basically the way it's going to be, I suppose. Um, but to be honest, that's not as bad as I was expecting, but there is quite a bit there. I'd, I'd say if you were running this in, for example, dusk lighting or something, then I'm sure this um, probably wouldn't be as noticeable. But, well, there is light bleed there, which obviously isn't acceptable. But um, obviously in daylight, you won't see it at all. I'm sure in even darker lighting, like obviously pitch black, you're going to see it very obviously. But <laughs> I suppose in dusk lighting, it might be a bit better. But if you wanted to, you can always paint the inside of the body if you want to, uh, to stop this happening. And that obviously will make the model look better. Um, but as it is, it's not as bad as I was expecting. Although I say that, the longer I stand here, the more obvious the light bleed becomes. I think it's taking a while for the light to actually bleed through the body shell. And it does actually look quite bad now, to be honest. So, yeah, conclusion, uh, light bleed, uh, quite bad. Um, but, well, I suppose pitch black, you're going to get it anyway. But anyway, we'll switch the lights back on. If I can find the light switch. There we are. <laughs> So yeah, it is a shame that we have got light bleed, but I suppose, considering how much white <laughs> there is on this model, it's kind of inevitable. Inevitable. I don't know if painting the inside of the body shell black would um, affect the livery on the outside. I'm not sure if it will make the um, whites look darker than what it's supposed to be. Um, I don't know, but um, at least when, well, I was, kind of, I was expecting there to be light bleed anyway. I knew there would be, um, and, but I was expecting it to be worse. It wasn't quite as bad as, as what I was expecting. But it was there, which is a shame, but at least in daylight, you can't see it at all. And I'm sure in even, even if it wasn't pitch black, even let's say it was dusk, I'm sure it wouldn't be incredibly noticeable then. But as she is, in daylight, she looks the part. So let's get her running and see what she's like. I think you'll agree, she's running very well. Nice and smooth. And at least at this speed, you can't hear the motor very well either. It, it is near enough silence now, which is good. So overall, she's not too bad. She is, well, she's a fantastic looking model. She, she's a fantastic looking train. I mean, look at that. She looks amazing. The performance, at least with this decoder, it can be better. So that I'm not gonna mark, uh, mark down the performance too much because of the decoder, because it's the decoder that's uh, making the loco, well, loco, making the model run how it is. So I won't knock it too much. But overall, she's great. Absolutely fantastic. If you want one of these, definitely get one because you will not be disappointed. They are absolutely fantastic. Will, will, will I get one myself? Well, no, very, very unlikely. As nice as this model is, and it, it really is amazing. Unfortunately, LNER isn't really my region. As I'm sure you're aware, I'm more Great Western. But if I didn't model Great Western, 
this would definitely be the region I would do. Without a doubt, it would definitely be the region that I would do. But in conclusion, if you want one of these, I think you should get one. And now let's have some ratings for the very nice Hornby LNER Class 800, uh, the Celebrating Scotland livery. First of all, the detail. It's got to be 10 out of 10, I think. Overall, the detail is really, really good. The amount of separately fitted parts is really good. The livery is applied really well. Overall, I just can't really fault it. I'd, I would say some of the details, maybe they could be slightly better. But overall, the detail, no major complaints with it. Overall, it's really, really good. Same with the performance, I think. Performance, it's got to be 10 out of 10 for that as well. Overall, again, really, really good. Nice and smooth. I know it's slightly jerky at low speed, but that's because of the decoder doing that, so that's not the actual mechanism. I also have experience with these with these Class 800s with other, with other decoders and on analog as well. And overall, they're really, really good. The only reason this particular one is running the way it is at low speed is just purely because it's got a Hornby decoder in it. So I can't really mark it down for that. So overall, it's really good. Again, the speed the speed's really, really good. It's smooth at all speeds. Again, not taking the decoder into consideration. Overall, it's really, really good. Really, really good. It handles the uh, train really well. Um, I have tried this with a nine coach rake as well, and it handles that just fine. Maybe a tiny bit of wheel slip, but overall, it's really, really good. So overall performance is great. I don't, I don't think it could be much better, to be honest. The quality, however, it's definitely not as good as good as the others. It's got, I think, eight out of 10 uh, for quality. It's probably about right for this. First of all, I think the plastic pantograph brings it down slightly. Whilst the pantograph is okay and it, and it does the job, I suppose, it's really, really flimsy. It doesn't feel very high quality. These, these pantographs, um, they are very easy to break. They really aren't the sort of um, quality sort of piece you'd see on a model of this price. So that definitely brings the quality down and the light bleed as well. Light bleeds like this, this bad on this model, again, being this expensive, it's just not acceptable really. The light bleed issue, Hornby should have picked this up at the factory when they were producing these, and yet it slipped through. It's a well-documented issue, so I don't think I can really let that pass. It's really, really bad, the light bleed, to be honest. I just, I just can't let, it's just not good enough really. It needs to be better. It's also been documented, I believe, on the test live read 800 that Hornby did which is one of the first ones they produced. So Hornby should have been fully aware of this um, light bleed issue on a on a white body shell. But obviously this is, the body shells on these are molded white plastic and obviously the red of the livery is just painted on. However, Hornby should have known that there was gonna be light bleed issues with these. I know it's only in the dark that you can see this, but still there are gonna be people out there who are, going to, who are going to want to run this in the dark and they're gonna to have to either put up with this light bleed or they're going to have to do something about it, which they shouldn't really need to do. So overall, 8 out of 10 for quality. Overall, it's generally okay. The build quality is good, and it feels quite sturdy in your hands. But again, the plastic pantograph and the light bleed, it's not good enough, and it should be better. So overall, 8 out of 10 for quality. Value for money, however, overall, it's not too bad. I've given it 9 out of 10. One reason it's not 10 out of 10, I think, is I have taken the RRP of these in, into consideration. Now the price paid for this was an absolute bargain, obviously I didn't buy it because it's not mine but I do know how much it's paid and overall I think it was a very very good price, overall very, I think it's probably one of the best prices you could get these for but also taking the, the RRP into consideration plus the quality issues I don't think I can quite give it 10 out of 10 for, um, for value for money but overall can, taking all things into consideration overall the value for money is good I think if you can get one of these for, for the price that was paid I think you, you'd be very, very happy with it. I wouldn't pay the RRP if you can help it, but if you do want one of these and you're happy to pay that much, then obviously do. But I would recommend looking, looking around and trying to get one as cheap as you can. But overall, value for money, it's not too bad. So overall, that gives an overall score of 9.25 out of 10. Overall, a really fantastic model at a really good price, but I think it just has a few quality issues that need tweaking. But apart from that, it's a fantastic model.